Welcome back, everybody. Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and mm -hmm. today is National Subscribe to VO Buzz Weekly YouTube Channel it Day. Is. So we're gonna wait right here until you do mm -hmm. that. Go ahead. Talk do, amongst yourselves. Click do, the do, do, do. <laughs> We're back. Randy Rogel, part two. Come Let's with us. Let's get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now. Prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. This recurring little theme I love. This is a recurring melody. See what I did there? Yeah. What's that? When somebody goes, no, no, Randy. No, Randy. You go, uh-huh. No. And you just press on you persist you just you don't relent and that's how much time fantastic yeah how well, much time between little... between the time that you actually started plowing to the time that you actually got that break well when i came it took about 10 months to um that's it yeah when i was here 10 you know all that rejection mm -hmm. and 10 months to break in the studio but to your comment that's a good one and i would say to all of you out there who want to work in this business because there's a lot of talented people yes a lot of competition is never accept no from somebody who can't say yes. Mm. 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 That's a wow, t-shirt. Wow, we're gonna have to get a t-shirt. That is a t-shirt. <laughs> say it again. Say that I again, hear that's it amazing. Again. Never accept no from somebody who can't say yes. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And you didn't, and look at where you are today. Well, that, yeah, Were you aware of that at the time, or is that no. I've learned that. I've learned sage, that afterwards. You know. I was talking to a showrunner one time, and we kind of discussed that, but no, at the time, I had no clue what to do in Hollywood. All, yeah. all I knew is, you know, my ability and what I wanted to do. You know, it, spe speaking of this, the best answer I've ever heard to that kind of question of, you know, what would you do if you couldn't do this, you know? Yeah. Believe it or not, I, I saw it on an interview on television with Steven Spielberg, of all people. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to him. And I think he was on Oprah, he was on The View, or one of those shows. Yeah. And someone asked him, you know, they allowed the audience to ask questions, which was a real thrill for them to be able to actually directly mm -hmm. talk to Steven Spielberg. And someone sat up and said, now look, if you could not have been a director in movies, if that would have not have been available to you, what would you have done, what, what other career would you have had? Right. Now what answer, and he didn't hesitate. What answer do you think Steven Spielberg gave? Uh, be, be a voice actor? <laughs> no, it was a brilliant, brilliant answer. And he didn't think about it because it's just who he is. Yeah. He said, there was no well, choice. Well, I would have found some way to get past the gate guard. I would have climbed over the wall. I would have found a way. In other words, he would not even entertain the question. There was no, there was he didn't no accept the grammar of the question. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not possible mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have done that. It's I would have done. I would have just found the barriers. See, yeah. he was yeah. that yeah. driven yeah. and that confident in his own abilities. And yeah. that's really the way you've got to be. But don't you, you believe think, in yourself. Yeah. yeah, and don't you think, because I have a dance background, and... Um, hmm. Juilliard uh, graduate Juilliard here. Grad. Oh, no Over kidding. Wow. Yes. Which In is ballet, the tap, jazz, what? Ballet, modern, flamenco, all of that. Oh, but I think, you know, that discipline, like you had the military discipline, the dance, we were talking about this the other day. Yeah. There's no excuses. There's no, I don't feel like it. It's like the show must go on. You press on regardless. And dancers have, I've worked with a lot of dancers. They have amazing discipline. Dancers have the most discipline yeah. of anybody, more than, more than military guys. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I feel like that has to be somewhere in your fabric. You know what it is? It is self-discipline. And mm -hmm. I guess if anything that, you know, going to a military academy or West Point, they did teach you that to become a self-starter. Yeah. Because I remember when I got down here, and I didn't know anybody, I would wake up in my bed, you know, my little dink apartment there, I was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Sitting there all by myself, thinking, what do I do next? And I would get myself up and I would force myself to call agents and try to make appointments yeah. and call mm -hmm. casting directors and then mm -hmm. sit down and write and get, and just, so, you know, but actually that, that, the scary part is the journey, is the part you should find fun. It's all yeah. fun, even though it's scary, it, it wouldn't be half as fun if it was that easy for you, if you Absolutely. could do it. I mean, d climbing that mountain is the joy of it. And then getting there and looking back, like I tell you about my friends, these guys, mm -hmm. Lieutenant John, as we look back now where we are, it, it's all with joy and fun that you made that, that you had to d overcome those obstacles. So yeah. look, look at them as a joyful opportunity and keep a sense of humor about it. Mm -hmm. I will tell you in Hollywood, Everybody, I, as much as you think people want you to fail, it's actually the opposite. Vancouver. Yeah, I was in Vancouver. Uh, uh, that's where our production facilities are for this show. And we were having auditions last week. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, 
I am looking for someone to come in and be good. You know, you may think you're coming into the room and, oh, they all hate me. It's yeah. just exactly the opposite. They want, they're going, oh, please be good. Please be good. Solve because if you're good, yeah. uh, my problem is solved. So yeah. everybody, re look, at it, look at that. When you go in, they have been looking for you. You see, imagine this. There's all these people out there that we have to wade through. We're looking for you. Right. But there's no way we can find you until you make yourself available to us. So when you come in that room, bring it. Be mm -hmm. prepared and relax I mean be prepared you know, yes. to, to, and yes. relax <laughs> number one that's the second t-shirt know your craft be prepared yeah. yes know your craft I remember you know I was uh, you know John Rubenstein who did um, of course yeah John he, when he did Pippin and he, yeah. he said uh, when he got finally got in the room he couldn't even get an audition. And they said to him, where, where have you been? He said, I've been in the alley trying to get in. <laughs> yes. yeah. But that's, that's the point. When you, if you come in prepared and you deliver it and you're wonderful, they, they go, you know, that's all. <laughs> that's the yes. guy, yes. That's the guy yes. we want. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. so good, man. Did you ever feel or have you ever felt burnt out, just like toast? And if so, how do, do you get through it? How wait, do you just got some great questions. I would say that question is at the root, at the very heart of what makes a professional from mm. an amateur. Anybody can write a good script once, or they can write a song if you're inspired and you have enough time. The right. question is, can you do it when you're not inspired, when you don't want to do it? And mm -hmm. that just comes from doing it over and over and developing your craft and understanding, if you're a writer, understanding structure, understanding dialogue, understanding plot, or if you're a dancer, mm -hmm. being in shape. You know, I mean, how many times have you done a show where, I, you know, I, I, like doing Sing the Rain? I remember I was at the paper mill and, and we were doing eight shows oh, a week and we had like five million. And, and I remember I was saying backstage, it goes, dun, 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 dun. And I go, you just gear up and then yes, you go. Yes, you just do it. But you know, yeah. the, di the difference between that, because I remember having done a lot of performing, uh, I remember one of the actors kind of complained, like, oh, we gotta do the show again. And, and at that time I was at Warner Brothers, they let me go away for a month to, mm -hmm. or two months to do the show as long as I got my songs and my scripts in on time. Right. And I was telling him, I said, you know, when you're an actor, Someone's written your lines for you. Someone has written the music for you. Someone's written the lyrics for you. Someone's built a set and they're lighting you and they're handing you the prop. They're telling mm -hmm. you where to stand. Now, you have to have the ability. You have to go out there and do it. But what's a lot <laughs> different, what's harder for me at least, and when you're composing or when you're writing, you sit down, nothing says that at the end of the day, what you've done, there's yeah. nothing that right. says, yeah, follow these 10 steps right. and you'll have a good script. Yes. It doesn't work that way. So you really have to learn to deal with that, that knot in your stomach of going, oh, I don't want to do this today. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, it's funny you asked, I was totally burned out <laughs> yesterday because I had to write, get the script done. And I was like totally I spent. wanted to butter you. You felt like toasty when you came in. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was totally you know, spent at the yeah, end of it. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, when you're right, you just get, you know, that creative thing. I get up and I just go for a while. I, I'd go down to the other guy's office and mm -hmm. talk for a little yeah. bit. I'd go to sleep on my couch, you know, you know yeah. just to yeah. recharge the battery. Are you a harsh critic of your work? Yeah, you know what? That's another thing is you keep your own, be a harsh critic, but also be a, be a fair critic. Mm -hmm. Keep your own counsel. A lot of times when you go, if you have to show somebody to say, is this good? You know if it's good. Mm -hmm. See, you, yeah. if you don't know it's, if you don't think it's good, I guarantee right. you they're not going right. to think it's good. Is get to know what, what, what makes it work for you. Like when I finish a song, I know that song's good. Mm -hmm. If nobody else likes it, I go, okay, well, you're wrong. I mean, it's a good right, song. Right. Maybe it just doesn't go. My point is, you know if it's good or if it's not. Mm -hmm. And you just have to write. If you want to become, it's like Stephen King. If you want to learn you know, a great book on, he's called On Writing. Mm -hmm. And he sort of gives you the nuts and bolts yeah. of it. But he says, you want to learn to be a writer? Write. Yeah. Yes. That's how you do it, man. You're going to write a lot of crap before you write yeah, this Yeah, and you um, got to write more than once or twice. I want to go back to this because we talked about this earlier, but you got a, a, a piano. Somebody gave you a piano. Oh, <laughs> yes. They did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's hear about, about how you got this piano and wh why it even happened. Well, because... I'd written that one song. You know, I ran. I went home and I wrote that song. I have a piano at home. Yeah. And I came. They liked it. So I wanted me to do another one. So here I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm on staff at Warner Bros. I'm You're running, running, running back over. Over. Come back in. You know. And then if I want to make an edit, I go. Oh, I got to go find the piano again. So finally, I. You know. Um, as as the you know songs were hitting and getting on, that I, I believe that Tom 
and Jean, and they had talked together, they had talked to Stephen. So someone rolls this piano into my office, and they had a little card from it, from uh. Stephen. It says, hey, I, I kept the card. It says, you know, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do with the show, but now you're going to be my little Gershwin, you know, it's like Tin Pan Alley. Or the that's Gwendolyn. so cool. That's so that was real. And, and, that, and I think Tom and Jean did that kind of as a reward for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had a piano in my office, and I was right next to Jean McCurdy. Oh so I'm in there playing, and this is before. Yeah, this is before you had those like those because of the '90s. That you, they didn't have those sets where I could have headphones. Yeah, it, was yeah, a piano, yeah. it was an acoustic piano. Yeah, this is like the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd be playing, and Gene come over. I'm on the phone. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> but that was pretty cool because I'd sit there all day either that writing, or writing, or writing. And yeah. then people would. I remember Alan used to come by and say, "Oh, what do you want? I play the song." Yeah. 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 This, yeah. Uh, typically, when you're writing a tune, um, you know, for for a production, mm-hmm. uh, a show, whatever. Does the word, the lyrics come first or does the music come first? I, I say, th- this is a question, uh, th- I said this in the show, uh, there's a, that, they asked that question of famous Sammy Khan. They said, mm-hmm. what comes first, music, the lyrics? He said, the phone call. Mm. But That's good, <laughs> yeah, the phone and, call. And, and it, you know, it really does depend. Um, a lot of times for the show, for what I was doing, we would have an idea for what the song would be about. So you have to kind of find what the hook is on the song. Right. And when you do that, that will suggest you, you know, like, like I gave an example of L.A. Dot or La Dot. Uh-huh. Right. So if I'm thinking she's going, I'm L.A. Dot, L.A. Dot, that sort of gave me this rhythm. Yeah. And so that begins suggesting the lyric, mm-hmm. and then the melody sort of falls in, and then it kind of goes back and forth to like, get, you know, because you want to get yeah. a catchy melody or something. Right, right. So. And that and was great, by the way. You guys catchy. are going to love the oh. show when you see it. Anime, Noel. Anime X Live. Noel um, is uh, like, are you kidding me? That was insane. We I like, thought we that like was so good. That all the way home. Oh, that was. That, just, that won an Emmy. It's like, mm. and it should have. Mm. You know, because it's like I, I think you know what's great. And when you talked about this a little bit earlier, is I wish we had a piano right here so you could I play know. that for us. <laughs> I know. Do you have a pocket keyboard? A pocket keyboard. A pocket keyboard. Pocket keyboard. We're gonna do part three. I guess you'll have to come see the show. You'll, come you'll have to come see the show. Part Mano- three. Yeah, Manoel is a is a is a fun yeah, song. Yeah, you know, because it's like you're not like you said about the kids. I mean, kids are so smart, but. You're not writing down to anybody. You're you're just being truthful, and it's just yeah. whether someone knows the reference exactly. Yep, yep. Somehow it just cuts through. Um, do you, where do you find inspiration? Well, I mean, I think you would say in honesty. Mm-hmm. I know in script writing now, you know, whenever you're writing a script, you know, plot is a tricky. You know, story is good. Plot is tricky. And I'll give you an example. And then I'll get to your point of inspiration. One of my first Batman scripts uh, I was writing, I wanted to have Batman and the Joker slug it out on a roller coaster. I thought, oh, that'd be a great big set piece, right? So I'm finding, as I'm writing, I'm forcing the story. I'm you know, bending the plot because I'm trying to get to that p- point over there. And it was all concocted and all forced. And it mm-hmm. didn't really... You know, it didn't hook up from one scene to the next nicely. You know? mm-hmm. And you never want to write a script where someone goes, well, why are they doing that? They could just do this other thing. So finally, I let that go. I just threw that out, and I let the story go where it wanted to go in a beautiful way. And I didn't end up on the roller coaster, but I ended up someplace just as good and just mm-hmm. as well. So when truthful. you're writing, be honest. Ask mm-hmm. your, I mean, that's what, the, when you said the word honesty. For inspiration, I, you know, there... I just love great movies. I love great writing. I love great books. I love great mm-hmm. performances. Uh, being around other people are great. You know, right. just things that things that get you excited. I'll tell you, you know, I did a lot of dancing too. Not not to your level, but you know, Sing in the Rain is, is you, a heavy tap do a show. Few, uh, a few little steps for us. We're yeah. do a little dance break. A little dance break. Uh, we can do a little time. Randy and I are gonna <laughs> yeah, oh do my a little. God. We do Moses suppose. We're gonna do a little <laughs> Dancing with the Stars VO edition. Yeah. Oh. Uh, when I did Sing in the Rain, that's a very heavy tap show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With I mean, if you've seen the movie with Gene Kelly and all that. Yeah. And I remember when I was you talk about inspiration. I used to watch on you know I'd see Fred Astaire dance or mm-hmm. I would see. Gene Kelly dance. I would go running down the street, jumping over fire hydrants, swinging off lamp. You know that just right. you know, yeah, yeah. the transcendent right. luminous hit me. So I would think of whatever it is that you like to. If you're a composer, if you're a writer, if you're a director, if you're a performer, you know, find the thing that really turns you on. Yeah. And yeah. ask yourself, like, if you wanted to be a writer, uh, you want to write screenplays. What movie would you have written? Do you think? So ask yourself. Oh, you know, like for me, I, Back to the Future would be a movie I totally mm, would have written. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, that, that's the genre I would like to be in. Yeah. Or if you're a performer, dancer, what is mm-hmm. the thing for which you have passion? And that's generally the thing you're going to do well at. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. So be truthful. I love that. And that's really important. Yeah. To be like truthful. guitar players. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So 
What does the next chapter in Randy's life look like? <laughs> a big drink after <laughs> this is over. No, ice, you know, no ice, no. You know, uh, you know, actually, what you've asked is uh, Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. um, I did write a show which got pr produced up in Seattle, and yeah. then I was working very heavily on the Broadway show for Parenthood, but that's stalled now. Mm. So, but uh, that is actually absolutely my next thing. I want to be writing Broadway shows. Oh, I want to be there. Well, I know I that's going to happen. Gonna well, you can see opening. from the songs I write, it sort of comes yes. from that. Oh, that, gosh, that yes. yeah. But you know, anime uh, d more immediately too, or at the same time, Animaniacs Live is really taking off. So we are doing this show, Rob and I. At the same time, I'm you know I'm running these other shows and writing, mm -hmm. but it's so much fun to be able to go back on stage and perform yeah. live with all the audience. So we big... need Animaniacs the musical. Animaniacs the musical. That, wow. Well, this is kind. This is a pretty good step. You towards get the it. water tower, the set. <laughs> no. Well, we've yeah. and even since you've done it, Rob and I've done it. We did it in uh, St. Paul. We did it in Pittsburgh. We're headed to yeah, Tucson. We're headed to Arlington. Yeah. We're going to be in New York. And so we've been adding more. I've added lots more animation, mm -hmm. and we added a lot more gas. So you know, the show great. just keeps growing yeah. and growing. Yeah. Soon you're going to have to get a tour bus, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and you guys are just going to go on tour, city yeah. to city. Animaniacslive.com. You guys, you, do you can not find miss it. all the information um, where they're going to be. You have to see it. That so show, special. I have to say, it's like lightning in a bottle. When everything comes together, you yeah. go. In fact, I and tell each you, performance is, is different. It's it, never each performance exactly is kind of the same, exactly. which is great. And by the way, you know, we only have, like we do it with the constructors, we have two hours. Sometimes yeah. in, the, in the more intimate version, we only have an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. We have like five hours. Of, and I said, well, Rob, you know, we'll have to introduce <laughs> some new songs. <laughs> Uh, you know, because I have tons and tons of songs, and I like, and, and it'd be fun to do songs like, okay, you want to hear another one we never got to do? Right. Yeah. Fact, we, I said, we sure should, we'll ones. do one special show. These are the songs yes. that never made it on animation. Well, and that, you know, it, it also is just so great because people feel it's, and even if, I mean, we were in a pretty large venue, but yeah. you, it was so inclusive yeah. and so intimate. Which is so special. You guys do such a great job at making everyone feel like we're in a living room. Yeah, right, you know? that, and you're right. That's sort of the feel of the show, mm -hmm. and and with the audience interaction too. And yeah. then right in the middle of it, there's an orchestra in your living room. Yeah, because all those guys so great. Yeah. Well, and we had Julie and Steve music, do those gosh. great, you know, orchestrations. Yeah, now. you yeah. can't symphonic music. There's nothing like live symphonic music. Oh, isn't it great? And and in fact, when we did Animaniacs back in the day, because Steven Spielberg was the producer and mm -hmm. he commands you know, a lot of resources, yeah. right. that we had a live orchestra. And nobody has that anymore. Mm, and so no. it's nice that we do Animaniacs Live, we can bring a live orchestra to it, Which too. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. By the way, we're lucky we got to see it with the live orchestra. Absolutely. I know, because that's expensive for us. But yeah. we're happy it, it to spend is. that money on you. It is. Yeah. Hit but, the but, donate button if you'd like <laughs> to help out. Yeah. Oh, this is mine right here. <laughs> you mm. can have mine. Mm -hmm. It was such an incredible experience, yeah. man. Do we have any other questions uh, for Randy? Yeah, we do. Um, so when you think about, look into the reflecting pond, Randy, when you think about your career, you know, what do you think have been the keys to your longevity and your success? You know, boy, you're good. You really asked some great questions, I think, because in Hollywood, it really is about a career, not just doing one, you know, there are how many people have done sort of one show or mm -hmm. one thing? Mm -hmm. um, I look at, you know, like kind of a role model of mine is a guy like Alan Burnett I was talking about. Alan created all those shows, he, Batman, Superman. He, he likes to joke, I'm, I'm you know, he's, I, I do men in tights. <laughs> but he's such a good writer, and I've seen mm -hmm. him write screenplays too. And unlike a lot of people who you think, like posers and flashy, Alan looks very professorial, very educated. You know, he's not, he's not out there to, yeah. you know, do the big publicity thing. He just does good work. Mm -hmm. So when you want to think about your your career, you want to just be doing good work all the time. Because if you do good work, people will seek you out. Yep. Yeah. It's hard breaking in, as I told you, you know, but that's fair. You know, how, how are people supposed to know who you are? And there's so mm -hmm. many other people who are posers. And I, you know, it's unfortunate. I've run into a lot of posers. And I've hired a couple of them, yeah. mm. and I had to rewrite How'd their script. Well, you? I had I ended up writing, having to rewrite their script. I paid them, and then we had yeah. to rewrite their scripts, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, and in fairness, some maybe sometimes that that just wasn't the right show for them. Of you course, know, just because someone writes is a great writer in The Simpsons, that doesn't mean they're going to be a great writer on right. Modern Family or on a you know a more serious show, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, on a CSI kind of show. So yeah. you have to find, you know, and I, you know when I find it, you know, writers. And 
act and animators are very much like actors. Mm -hmm. You know, you have you know if you want to have a, a romantic lead versus a short, you know, big action star, you know, you need to cast those. You know, the writers the do right, certain things yeah. very well. Right, exactly. right. And it's good for you to find out what you know. You see a lot of actors come in. And you know they want to. I'm an actor. I want to do. You know, I do I, everything. Yeah. If I yes. came in and I, if I went to, a, you know, if I if I went to a, 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 an interview and I said, well, now it's with an agent. He says, well, now how do you see yourself? I said, well, I see myself doing all the or, the Schwarzenegger roles. You know, uh, you know, is see yourself who you really are, mm -hmm. and that's the one you're going to hit the home run with. Then when you're big, you can be Mel Gibson and do Hamlet. You know, yeah, you can do exactly. the other things. Right, right. But know what it is that you do well. Know how they're going to see you, how they can sell you. Understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets you a career. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Wow, I man. That. I got to tell you, dude, like I knew we were going to get some great stuff mm -hmm. out of you today because you're very interesting Juicy. and you're extremely smart and you've Juicy. had a, an amazing career. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the stuff that you've been talking about yeah. is so deep and so business-minded. I mean... I, my business will grow from all the stuff oh. that you yeah. said today. So yeah. if yeah. yours does it, you guys are crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope you re-watch re no, this thing. Well, I want to work with every one of you. I want to see, you know, Rob and I are always out there yeah. and people stand up. We're always looking for who's going to be the next Rob Paulson. Who's exactly. Be the next, you know? yeah. Yeah. And and you also want to work for people. And I, again, a, a guy like Alan Burnett, you know, he he's the kind of guy who would develop you till suddenly... You're going off. Yeah. To, he's losing you, right. but he he blesses right. you. I mean, I think a guy like Bob Goodman, who was Alan's secretary. Yeah. And when I met Bob, the day I met Bob Goodman, I liked him. Very smart guy. He would sit there writing script for Alan, and, and so Alan finally brought him on. Bob's the lead writer on Elementary now. Mm -hmm. He did Warehouse Third Time. He's a big, big writer and producer, and Alan Burnett helped, you know, yeah. create yeah. him just like yeah. he helped cultivate my career. Yeah. yeah. Do you Beautiful. think, if you could think about, if you had to start your career over in 2017, um, you know, would you do anything? Like, would you do anything differently if you had to start your career over? Well, I've often thought what would have happened. Well, now you have I, email. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you have you have FedEx. You have FedEx. <laughs> Pick I up had, that Bible and FedEx it to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it used to be you had to run that script <laughs> yes. over. But you know, I often have thought, you know, had I not gone to West Point, had I come right here mm -hmm. and started right away, I would have had a lot more time to, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, but everything way, happens I like, you know, the, that, you know, everything, every path you take yeah. is right. something that enriches you. But think about that you. sales background. Yeah. That served you really, really well. Completely. Well, at least it taught me not to be afraid, and it taught me to <laughs> recognize, I could see yeah. what was going on here. Right. Yeah. You know, right. I'm thinking like, okay, this is an obstacle yeah. that mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like when you write. You know, when you write a character, it's just like how it is. You know, your 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 character wants something, and you're going to put obstacles in his way. Mm -hmm. And how you deal with getting past those obstacles defines who you are. Yes, Absolutely. it's an opportunity or a punishment. Mm -hmm. So, Randy, why don't you tell us about some of the, your uh, some of the projects that you're working on right mm -hmm. now? The ones that you can talk about. Yeah. I can't. Okay, the ones I can talk about. I work actually for no. Us. Let's talk about the ones <laughs> you can't, can't talk yeah, about. Yeah, and then and you're going to find Randy dead. <laughs> we shot, yeah. promise we won't air them. Just uh, once, yeah. Chuck wants someone to go. You know what? I am going to reveal it. <laughs> no, but oh, we don't gosh. want you to get I, in trouble. I would be sliced so badly. Yeah, yeah. Tell you. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I work for a studio called Big Bad Boo. That our corporate officers Big are bad named, Big Boo. Bad Boo. I know, it's Big a funny bad name, Boo. but that, that, that's mm -hmm. the name it has. And it, um, the corporate headquarters are in New York, and we, our production facilities are in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And I use a lot of writers here, but we have a show called A Thousand and One Nights, which is gonna, it's in its third season now. Very fun show, I'm very proud of it. And it's basically, those, you know, those old Thousand and One Nights that you remember, like Aladdin and yeah. Alibaba yeah. and Sinbad, except if you've ever read the original, they're dark, they're sexual, they're violent, and actually they're boring. Because those cliffhangers, you know, it'll, it'll, she'll, you know, cliffhang hair, go to another. So right. we completely rework them, and they're done in the style of the Princess Bride. So they're just kind of fractured fairy tales. It's done very well. We're in 88 countries now. Wow. Around the world. Yeah. And, and, in, we're, and we're, I mean, we're on and, and Disney, and we're on the Disney Channel in, in, in Asia, and we're Nickelodeon. We're all over the Middle East because that, that's a very right, popular right. franchise. Here, I think we're on PBS. We have another show. There are two kids shows, you know, like more preschool. One's called Lily and Lola, and one's called Sixteen Hudson. And those are in production. It's really cute shows. The animation on them is just really fun, really mm. terrific. We have another show that we've just sold, um, uh, and the creator of a young guy named Daniel Erico, a really a brilliant guy called The Bravest Knight. The Bravest and Knight. And it 
Uh, I tell you, this pe you're, people are going to love this show, yeah. and Hulu's yeah. got it. So, uh, or oh, that, awesome. that's where it's being. I, I think they're the ones who've expressed the interest. That deal's being made. Yeah. But I've been reading his scripts, and they're just mm. funny. It's, they're just terrific. So that's the so other great, man. And then we have other shows that are in development now, yeah. but it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think things are going to stop for you anytime soon, yes. buddy. There's just way too much <laughs> talent. And they <laughs> shouldn't because Absolutely. so well deserved. So let's happy take a. For Oh, yeah, this Let's is... Let's take Randy out with the last this question. This is a mystery. The okay. mystery question, and then we'll be out of here and we'll let you, you go pick, eat. I pick any card and it has a question any on Any card it has a question on Okay. I will take... It's wacky. Right. And read the card as Rob Paulson. <laughs> read it as Rob Paulson. Just Paulson. <laughs> uh, Rob Paulson. <laughs> I wish I could do Rob Paulson. I'd make a lot more money. Yeah, right. I, be a one-man show, wouldn't it? Uh, Rob, um, such such a brilliant guy, and I always love the so fact that he tells me, "Goes Randy, I can't believe it. I make a living doing what I used to get in trouble for yes. in the seventh grade." Yeah. I said, "That's great." Yeah. Such a fabulous person. It is. It says, "When you're down, mm -hmm. what makes you feel better?" Now, this is different for everybody, but you know what works for me? I mean, there's several things that work for me. A, a lot, exercise. Yes. I'll just get up and ride my bike. Dwarfins. But another thing that really gets... I mean, I've had some time... Is it a stationary bike? Is, <laughs> no, I just ride up the hill. Okay. No, but another thing is I sit down and play the piano. And mm. you probably do it with the guitar. Uh, you know, I just sit by myself. And I've sometimes, when I'm just really burned out, I'll sit and play, really, and, but I'll play something like maybe classical or yeah. something, mm. or, or jazz, too. I love mm -hmm. that. And uh, that, you know, it's nice. You know, giving yourself a musical instrument, and I know Chuck can testify this because you're a guitar player. Yeah. Is music as a language, and giving that, making that self, that yeah. available to you, yeah. you know, just opens up things too. But but for that, that's for me, and uh, and then friends, mm -hmm. you know, hanging out. Nothing beats friends. friends Nothing man. beats yeah. friends. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you have the right friends, and I'm lucky. You know, I have friends. It's funny on my Facebook page, I've got people from Hollywood, I've got people from the corporate business site, and I've got people from the military. <laughs> yes. And I'm looking at all these, and they're all very different. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my, my military friends tend to be very conservative. Of course. My Hollywood friends tend to be very right. liberal. Right. I love right. to see this interaction going on. <laughs> yeah. But I, I look at it, I think, well, how rich is my life that I have all these yeah. different friends? Yeah, you know? that's really cool. Well, and now I have you guys. Yes. Well, that's great, man. And, and you deserve it because you're so just generous and kind and just such an authentic person it's such a pleasure i mean that Absolutely, just, that just comes thank off you of for you coming down ways. and sharing with thank us thank you so much me blush. thank, thank you. you so much for what a joy to be on your show absolutely randy rogel randy and rogel and Look maniacs at chuck and stacy veal buzz handsome as ever so talented <laughs> would you like an apple <laughs> <laughs> give him give the man an apple give him an apple that's, uh, hey, that's we'll my payment that's how i get paid that's how it's payment we're gonna see you guys next time i'm randy rogel i just got buzzed by chuck and stacy on VO Buzz Weekly. I haven't had this much fun since I can remember. And remember, as you travel through life and certainly as you travel the business of show, never accept no from somebody who can't say yes. Man, how can somebody write so much awesome music? He's so brilliant. I just I can't. just wanna like sit in his brain for a little while. I exactly. If we could only sit in Randy's brain for like think, ten minutes yeah. and like steal all those great crazy oh, ideas. So cool, so wow, talented. Yeah. We could be awesome music writers too. <laughs> Wait a minute. I kinda am. Hey, we're gonna yeah. be back next week with another show for you guys to so stick around. Absolutely and keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching and just remember you, you always have, have time for a little bit. Bit. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.